Today, we are going to continue with Science Chapter 1, Lesson 2. You will need your directed reading 1.2, which is in your Science EN. So DR 1.2. And again, I suggest either you follow along with me as I teach the lesson, or if you can't keep up that way, Go back and use your textbook because all of the answers are in order. So today's lesson, directed reading or lesson 1.2, is scientific methods. We have four objectives today. You should be able to explain why scientists use scientific methods, determine the appropriate design for a controlled experiment, Use information in tables and graphs to analyze experimental results and explain how scientific knowledge can change. So let's begin with what are scientific methods? Well, they are the ways in which scientists answer questions and solve problems. The videos will be attached to your lesson for you to go back and view. So let's kind of review a little bit. You ask a question. Asking that question helps to focus the purpose of what you are studying. So the purpose of your investigation. Sometimes scientists ask a question after they make the observation. So these two steps are interchangeable. So when you make an observation, this is anything that you gather through your senses. So ask a question and make an observation. You may make the observation and then ask the question or you may make, ask the question and then make the observation. Third, you will form a hypothesis. And we went over this in the last lesson. It is a possible explanation or an answer to a question that is based on observation and this is very important. It has to be able to be tested. So I had said earlier that it is basically an educated guess. Not just a guess, an educated guess. So your hypothesis is a statement of cause and effect that can be used to set up a test. And this is called a prediction. So I know you've made predictions in the past. So you basically do the scientific method and you don't even know you're doing it. This will be a video that you will watch after this recording. Okay, next you're going to test the hypothesis. And this needs to be a controlled experiment. That means you're testing only one factor at a time. So you will have a control group, one control group, and then one or more experimental groups. So that control group is going to be your basis. Like um, they will, all of your plants are, if you're studying how does music affect the growth of plants, all of your plants are going to be planted in the same type of soil. All of your plants are going to receive the same amount of water. All of your plants are going to receive the same amount of sunlight. The only thing that you're going to be testing, that one factor, is whether or not music has any effect on the growth of plants. So you could have your control group that doesn't hear any music. Another control group could listen to rock and roll music. Another control or another experimental group, I'm sorry could listen to uh, bluegrass. And then you could have several different types of music as you go. So that's just one example. Here's another example. This study was seeing if UV light exposure had any effect on deformities in frogs. So group one, you'll notice there's no UV light exposure. That is your controlled or your control group. Your experimental groups 
Group two, these frogs received UV light exposure for 15 days. And group three frogs had UV light exposure for 24 days. Now notice the jump from 15 days of exposure to 24 days of exposure. 15 days, still zero deformed frogs. But at 24 days, they had 47 deformed frogs. So you could draw a conclusion from this that a lot of UV light exposure definitely has an effect on deformities in frogs. So in testing this hypothesis, you've got to design the experiment, you've got to have very good planning, and you've got to consider all of those factors. And then you collect the data or the data. Scientists, you, if you're conducting an experiment, you have to use clear, accurate, honest records. So such as if you were doing that science fair project, you wouldn't want to skew the results. In other words, you don't want to prove your hypothesis to be right. Just the simple fact that you did the experiment, it's not about proving your hypothesis right or wrong. It's about gathering that information. And if you do it correctly, someone else can come along after you and repeat that same experiment and verify your results. If you lie about something, they're not going to be able to do that. So your investigation, your experiment should be repeatable by someone else, and they should be able to get the same results that you did. Next, you're going to analyze the results. This involves um, constructing reasonable explanations based on the evidence that has been collected. For instance, the frogs with the UV light. Think about uh, why they would have studied that. Why do you use sunscreen? Do you think that was tested on humans to begin with? Probably not. Then you're going to draw conclusions. So scientists can conclude if the, if the results of their experiment support their hypothesis. And again, Proving that a hypothesis is not true can be as valuable as proving that it is true. And this kind of goes against our nature because if we make a hypothesis, an educated guess, we kind of want to be right about it. So we want our results to end up proving us right. But that's not what the scientific method is all about. A hypothesis that you prove untrue is still giving information to the scientific field. So that knowledge is still there. And then what's the point in doing all of this work if you don't tell everybody else about it? <laughs> so you communicate your results. This sharing allows other scientists, again, to repeat those experiments to see if they can get the same results. And sometimes new data can lead scientists to go back and change their hypotheses. Okay, you have an Ian page where you are going to have to go back in and drag and drop to fill in the different steps to the scientific method. This chart is also in your book if you need further help with that. In the next lesson, we are going to talk about scientific models. <laughs>